My name is Ann Johnson Prum, and I'm the producer and principal cinematographer of Hummingbird's Magic in the Air. Making this film was incredibly challenging because hummingbirds are amazingly small and amazingly fast. So we had to use a new camera called a Phantom High Speed Camera, which is a high definition high speed camera. Many of the shots that you see in the film are filmed with the Phantom camera and are shot at frame rates between 200 and 500 frames a second. These high speed frame rates really allowed us to slow down the hummingbird's world. And once we slowed down the hummingbird's world, we could really see what it was up to. But the first time we used the Phantom camera uh, was in Ecuador and the birds were moving incredibly fast and then when we looked at the computer and looked at the very first shot, which was of one hummingbird coming in and hitting another hummingbird on the head, I thought to myself, oh my gosh, we actually can make this film. Because to, the, to my eye, when we shot it, you couldn't see anything but a flurry and clicking of bills and beaks and chattering. But when we could actually see that they were contacting each other and really having this other life that we didn't know anything about, I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be great. Just like you would use macro photography to look at an ant and really understand the ant's world, we're using high-speed photography to get inside the hummingbird's world. We also used a couple specialty lenses. One of them is a boroscope lens, basically a long tube with a lens at the very end that we attach to the high-speed camera. And that allowed us to put the lens right into a flower and get almost a flower's eye view of the hummingbird feeding. The boroscope also has a really neat effect where you get an incredible depth of field. We set this lens on the high-speed camera focused on a flower overlooking the Caribbean Ocean and we were able to capture a really stunning series of shots. We also took the boroscope and the high-speed camera into a patch of heliconia on the island of Dominica. We actually designed what we called a trolley cam that allowed us to dolly the camera on a cable stretched between two trees. Sometimes setting up one of these shots can take a few people many hours for just a few seconds of screen time, but to me, the effect is well worth it to get some really unique shots. In another instance, we actually wrapped a flower around a little tiny camera called Niconics camera and built a feeder into that flower just above the camera lens and were able to get shots of the hummingbird coming in and feeding at the flower. The kinds of films I really like to make are films that take an iconic animal, like the hummingbird, that we think we know. We think that it's delicate and jewel-like and fast-moving and, you know, somewhat like a fairy. And using new scientific information to say, that's not what hummingbirds are really like at all. Now we know hummingbirds are tough as nails. They live in places where no other animals live. They thrive at high altitudes. They have big competitive lives where they're battling each other. They forage for insects. These are things that really make people think, gosh, I didn't know that animal at all. I think that hummingbirds are nature superheroes. They have all kinds of amazing abilities that we haven't really been aware of because we haven't been able to see them very carefully. The story of this film is built on scientific discovery. The reason why we could make this film now and explore the hummingbird's world in an entirely new way was because scientists are really starting to understand the lives of hummingbirds. The stuff that we're doing now would not have been possible five or ten years ago at all. It's only working with scientists who are exploring hummingbirds using new technologies to really get inside their lives that we could show hummingbirds in an entirely new way. Hummingbird scientists allowed me into their labs and into their field sites.
Without these scientists, I could never have made this film. One of my favorite parts of this film is the insect catching scene, where we worked with a young scientist, Gregory Yanenga, who had spent pretty much four years trying to get hummingbirds to eat insects in an enclosure. We spent days and days and days trying to film hummingbirds catching insects. And finally, the male Anna's hummingbird decided to eat an insect. And he dove off the perch and caught an insect in a split second. In the film, it takes about four seconds for him to leave the perch and catch the insect. But in real time, it is barely an instant. I had never known that hummingbirds were dependent on catching insects to get their protein. So that was something really neat to discover in the making of this film. Although the insect catching sequence was filmed in a lab, every other shot in this film was filmed in the wild. And that required hours and hours, thousands of hours of filming in the field. This film was made in six different countries, from Canada to many parts of the United States, the Caribbean, a little island called Dominica, and then we traveled to Ecuador, Peru, and Chile. In many of those countries, we were able to film endemic hummingbirds, hummingbirds that are only found in a very restricted and narrow range. One of the most surprising places to find hummingbirds was in the Andes of South America, over 12,000 feet. And it is freezing cold, there's ice on the streams, there's snow on the volcanoes, and there are a lot of hummingbirds. One of the things I was so surprised to find in Ecuador, in one of these high altitude locations, were hummingbirds hopping all over the ground, feeding on tiny little plants. And that was incredibly hard to film because it was really hard to breathe, but also really, really neat to see because I had never heard about it and I don't think very many people have seen it. And the fact that hummingbirds are up that high and looked happy and were foraging freely and readily gathering nectar was just another testament to their amazing abilities. One of the great things about being a wildlife filmmaker is to be able to spend the time in the field to make a show about an animal like the hummingbird and to present it to the public in a new way. I feel that one of our jobs as wildlife filmmakers is to make people care about wildlife. And the best way to do that, I think, is to bring people into the animal's world and into the animal's life. A series like Nature allows you to really explore an animal and get up close and personal with that animal and allow the viewer a really intimate view. And I think it's that intimate view that creates a connection between the viewer and the animal that can really make people care about wildlife. When friends ask me who funded your film, I tell them, you did. Because it's people funding public television that make these kinds of shows possible. Thank you. <laughs>